Okay, recite record. Features, features, features. <clears throat> okay, we have Let's two... Let's change it to features. We have two desires, I guess. The first one is... Uh, type inference. Oh, just for the archive. Oh, we are... Today is the first day of Silver Plus, which means that we need to decide as soon as we can uh, what which features we, we want to classify as plus. And everything, and basically everything that we wanted to do in the previous version that we didn't because of the language, now we're gonna do it. Um, okay, so we want type inference as a well. Mm -hmm. I think this is obvious, but um, silverware. Uh, Are we gonna object. keep a lisp? Yes, right. Yeah, I want to inherit the grammar. Nathan has a problem with that though. So macros. Uh, by the way, those are different things, man. What like do you mean? Using that grammar and being a Lisp person. Yeah, yeah, the grammar would have a problem depending on what we are doing. No, but if not doing it as a Lisper, a lot of the grammar would be like asking for changes, like the delimiters and stuff like that. Yeah, if it were to be a Lisp, a lot of changes on things we were thinking about would be well different. Yeah, so I I vote for inheriting the grammar. What about you, Maketo? I do vote as well. Okay. Well, Silverware. I don't know, man. I, I prefer to, actually, if it were in an order, order of priority, it would be Lisp and then grammar, because we can just... Well, we can just, like, change no, that, that the decision, grammar, right? No, That's this decision is important a weekly decision. Because, no, this decision is, like, the most important decision, in my opinion, because if we Why? decide to inherit the grammar... We already have a lot of tasks to do out of the gate because you have to make the parser make this happen. And there is the issue. Oh, we are, that I was okay. I see. We are planning to use to keep using the old parser until we make our ours. No, no, is no. We're gonna edit? we're gonna have to make an. Uh, we could do that actually. So, but my initial intention was let's use a library mm -hmm. instead of making it uh, from scratch. Let's. We just have to make the same like high level parsers that we did on on the knife parser instead of doing like mm -hmm. the 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 many many plus many one blah 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 instead of doing those we're going to pick those from a library and use those to make the outer ones but then we stumbled upon a problem which is that I was talking to Nathan about we want to do more than just parsing right we want to save positions and we want to count lines and columns and if that's the case, I'm not completely sure we don't we have a way of not doing it from scratch. Uh, wait, wait, no, wait, wait. I think you are maybe mixing stuff. Because suppose you are using the one that you proposed, I guess. I think it was like out of parsec. Yeah. Even if you for some reason it doesn't have a support for that kind of stuff. And I'm not even really sure if they not also not, usually not... do. Yeah. I wouldn't think so, but that's like different things. Just because they don't have that doesn't mean we can't implement that and still having all the like basics that they are implementing. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm not sure if we have a way of not doing it from scratch. Maybe we do have I a mean, way of... I mean, that's not from scratch. No, but th th you don't know that. That's just an um, a guess that well, we can use AutoParsec and we can add more things on top of it. What I mean is not from scratch, is you don't have to do the bind, the mining and stuff, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know if we uh, have support of these sort of th things of counting lines and counting columns without doing it from scratch. Maybe AutoParsec does provide support for that out of the gate, which would be awesome. Uh, but we are not sure, so there's that. So that's why I think, that because if we decide to inherit the grammar, the same grammar from before, we can already jump in into this problem. Like, oh, let's decide the features. We already have a bunch of tasks to do. We have to basically reproduce the same org file that we have, that we had before. But using, instead of making from scratch, we're going to try to use the library, which is already here, by the way, already added to the project. Uh, but anyway, so we are, we're going to inherit the grammar, which, mean that, which means that that's cool. Wait, wait, let me just like uh, say the points against before you guys like uh, vote for sure. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so yeah, that's besides cool. like being, uh, let's call it ugly, because <laughs> uh, yeah, not 
I don't have another way to say it. <laughs> but two points that I guess would be a trouble. And it's not like a trouble, like totally deal breaker, but it's just a lot more hassle with it. Is because for some more stuff, it will become like, uh, how can I say? Like weird and weird and weirder to implement some stuff. So for instance, so types, so to declare ADTs and stuff, you end up with really weird thing. We already have some really weird shit. Like when declaring function with types and shit. In Lisp, it's not that weird. You don't have that many stuff there. I, I don't so. understand where is the problem, Mata. No, where, where not that. Well, I'm saying what I think are the problems. If you don't consider them, that's no, a different thing. Uh, so the Wait, other point again? is... Last thing? Two things. I, um, he said two things at, at the moment. First, he considers okay. to be ugly. That's the first. Mm -hmm. And the second yeah, that's not is a that... Problem. And the second is that, he, from his point of view, some features will be weirder to get weirder and weirder to implement using a Lisp point of view. Yeah, yeah, and I'm that, saying that, that I agree. think yeah. that's a problem, you see? So, like, not saying that you should think, but, well, that's you to decide. Yeah, could you define an example of something that could be a problem? I think if... Well, go on, Nata. I think I have one. Well, like, types, I think, are already be a huge problem, man. Like, to declare types and shit. But isn't that just a... Just uh, syntax, a syntactic I problem? I think types well, is yeah. just adapting. Yeah. Yeah, but isn't that... Why is like, that a problem? Why is that a problem aside from being ugly from your point of view? Well, I just said, like, they are not like deal breakers in the sense you cannot implement. It's just, like, really bad for us to implement the parser and for us to write the thing, right? The only problem I see with going for Lisp is, like, some decisions conflicting with other stuff. Like, uh, for example, well, our... I do have my third point that maybe it's regarding what you are thinking. One of the things is regarding the parameters. If you are going with the mood parameter approach, man, some stuff on the type system will become like a lot more tougher, like a lot more ad hoc. And if you are going with the uh, curved by default, I'm not sure how that oh, no. would be in We're not doing. Oh, man. Yeah, we're not doing curry, I guess. So, yeah, because for instance, the invoking with zero, that would be like out of the thing because you can't do that in like curry by default and stuff. Well, maybe <clears throat> cutting some corners so we, we can add like silverware 90% backwards compatibility because we can, for instance, removing the very addict stuff to make it less ad hoc. And stuff like that. That's something that we can do to to try to get a, like. I'm not necessarily. Uh, I don't necessarily want. Okay, I wanted in the beginning. I need to be honest. I I, I confess that I wanted to pay, to pick the same program from Silverware and put in Silverware Plus and just work. Backwards compatibility. Yeah, I that 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 would be really awesome. But if we uh. encounter that, oh. To make this thing that we made last time happen in here properly, this is going to be a hell of a, of a shitty experience to make. Then we can cut corners. We can decide to cut corners. For instance, the variadic part and stuff like that. Uh, this is an idea though. What do you think, Nata? I think that the most like problem would be that one regarding the varied arguments and stuff because that's a fact like a little more than just being ugly. Yeah, I agree with that. The variadic part would fundamentally change. And like, I'm perfectly comfortable with dropping that. Yeah, I'm also comfortable with dropping that. So, um, okay. Okay, cool. So, 90%, I'm gonna put actually like, yeah, 90%, I'm removing the variadic part because we already established that we're gonna drop that. So, 90% backwards comp compatibility. ADTs, uh, algebraic data types, type inference, object system, and macros. This is a, a very interesting yeah. list. <laughs> macros, good luck on that part. Macros, they are not hard if we don't make them uh, non-hygienic, which I think the language wait, is not wait, even Are supported. you considering that we have type system, type inference, and how that interacts with 
a whole no, lot of it's stuff. Just, it's just another compilation, but you do it before. You just well, it, it sounds really simple as, oh, type no, inference, they just guess the type rate. No, no, dude, like I'm saying, it, it is basically like macro building is essentially the same thing, the same thing as evaluation, like compilation, but you just do it before. So I don't see the, the problem. Like you just, like on a macro, let me think of types, right? Think of type inference, like every expression should have the type and then a macro, you should, if it's hygienic, you should predict the type of it as well. So the user might be able to like, um, well, you might have to specify the type do, or something like this. What about we do the following? Uh, because, well, you are admitting or not, that can be hellish because you're not implementing like a dynamic language that you can do whatever you want. So it, it will be hard, right? Even if we can do it regarding macros. So what about the following? We do more of the basic stuff that we know more about, we know we need, and things like type inference, object system, and macro, we let to do after we have the basic like working, right? Yeah, I agree that as far as we go, for instance, I, I did this in for, I did this for uh, in purpose. Silverware, 90% pair backwards compatibility, ADTs, type inference, object system, compat like this is in order for me. Uh, we are for this order that I it is described in the text. Compatible to what? That's a good question, right? So which platform? I think we should drop the .NET stuff now that we don't no, have man. the, the no, joke anymore. You. No, .NET, <laughs> thank you. Out of .NET, like, if you're out of C Sharp and F Sharp, no, thank you. It will be hellish. Yeah, so I think we should drop that. Uh, LLVM VM is a good option. Uh, well, uh, let's put that for now. And uh, later on, if we're not unsatisfied with that, we can change it later. So, why do you think that's that a really good part? Of, that's a really good part regarding code generation. It's like it really doesn't matter what you choose. Uh, yeah. Except in a few cases, it doesn't change much the rest. Yeah. Because the the problem that I'm thinking is I'm using ARM. I have an x86, but I mainly use ARM. So like, yeah. it would be hell to like. Yeah, go well, into a virtual port. machine. Virtual machine is the go the way to go in this. Case. Or we could make our virtual yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah, but that's that discussion for another day. And then we can make another language after that communicates <laughs> to silverware. Oh, you could do your own virtual machine, but the interpreter for that you would have to also write in a in a virtual machine. Like otherwise, you have to. Oh wait, no, you don't, right? No, you don't. Yeah, sorry, you don't, because you can run Haskell there too. Yeah. So, okay. uh, is there anything else that you guys think we should put on this list? For now, I don't know. I can't uh, think of anything that I look and say. System. Oh, there! Uh, I remember something from the wish list, the original wish list. Uh, that I, I'm not proposing yeah, to. The edit wish here. list had like ten, <laughs> ten things. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one of the things that it had. Uh, that I, I'm not proposing because I don't think it's uh, uh, it matters that much for our specific uh, um, lear learning pr pr process here, which is an optional lazy mode. I remember adding that to the original wish list. Uh, uh, but it, like I said, I don't think that wish I should add it here. I, but you are right. It had something like ten items, but I can't remember any of those aside from. Yeah, those don't. Ones. We we kept thinking for like a half an hour. <laughs> Dude, I, I must find that. Wait a second. Yeah, you have to find. Did you send in general? You sent in yeah. Discord, and you also should have that locally somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. you're right. And didn't format my computer, so just a second. Uh, depending on. Like... Oh, dude, algebraic effects would be cool. Oh no! Come, come on! Now you're just to... being no. Now you're just <laughs> being crazy. What do you mean by algebraic no, that would be cool. effects? I don't know what you mean about that. Uh, like for example, you have a I/O. Like uh -huh. think of print, uh -huh. and then you can capture the call and just handle it in another way. Like you capture an effect and you can do something with it. 
just a second. Yeah, the only thing that came to, to mind uh, with what you said is interruptions. But okay. Uh, Nathan, are you there? Yes. Okay, it's the only maggot uh, that is busy right now. Yeah, but this is going to be really cool. Because... Sorry, it's just getting my, my mom was talking to me. Okay. Okay, uh, what, what else? I don't remember what I was talking about. No, we were talking about the algebraic effects, and I, I said that the only thing that came to oh, my here, mind... Found it. Oh, here, fun it. Oh, cool. Let me paste here. Yeah, let's paste here and just start removing stuff. Dream. Or adding more. Who no, knows? no, no, that's, there's no way we are... I'm, I'm really doubtful I'm, we're going to add more from that list. I think we also said, like, cross-platform. Which is well, totally... if it's L VVM, then it's cross platform. <laughs> yeah, if we make it in a VM, yeah, but uh... there. Okay, so and that is already there. That is already there. Oh, pattern matching. How we how we forgot about mm. that? Yeah. Uh... I think that is like <laughs> on ADTs, man. Well, you can have ifs without pattern matching and having ADTs. So. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, we have we have we have a cool option on the object system as well. Uh, I think when we talk about object system, we're thinking of like incorporating it in the typing system, right? Yeah, that that discussion is going to be interesting because we, at that point you go we're already going to have the types working, so I'm really interested to see how we're going to combine those with an object system. Because like there are true, there are many options, right? It's like F sharp that incorporates like fully. Uh, but I think we'll, I don't remember how Ocamo deals with it. But I know like it, for example, inheritance is different uh, because you're not seeing the type the the class as a blueprint for the type, and that's where the distinction starts. Because that means, for example, in stuff like inheritance, mm -hmm. uh, in inheritance normally you would have. Uh, uh, multiple possible types for one expression, right? Like uh, one object in, in case. So you must check like what is the family of that thing. But like if you just have a, bl if, that's if you have the blueprint uh, scheme to make types. If you just want to organize the things and, and focus on message passing, which is like small talk and such, then you can ignore that. I'll just but close the door. I don't think that's a big thing regarding the type system. Like none of those options. No, it's you just have a decision. Some... Yeah, but I mean regarding type system, none of those options will like escape from type system or something. It could be only objects, it could be class based. No, it, I just saying because based. it is something that will influence how you're gonna think of the type system. Well, I yeah, think it's, it's the opposite. Oh, you think that the, the type system will reflect on the object system, not the opposite? I mean, the type system will be implemented already, right? So, when implementing the object system, we need to think about the type system and not the other oh, ways. I agree that you're thinking of constraints, but you're gonna. Uh, I'm not saying that thinking of the object system will affect the type system. That's what I'm saying. Oh. What I'm saying is, it will affect the way we will do the object system. Oh, what is it? And, and for example, the and how we are gonna extend that? Okay, that's a way that it will affect. So, like for example, the the inheritance problem that I talked about, like how do you defer that something is of type X, if it inherit if you have inheritance. Like you need to have now a bunch of possible types for the thing, so that's a decision you must extend on the type system. Yeah, that's definitely but something we need to, we're gonna have to consider. Why don't you just leave it out down there, Lemus, and then we can just do like scrap it off in the future, like done. Oh, the to do you mean? Yeah. Oh, I can do that. Mm. How do we add multiple lines on here? Oh. Oops. 
Done. Swank and Rappel. Dude, remove this, please. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do hot partial reload to be honest. Uh, we need to watch those things live uh, live stream. In a compiled language? Uh, he is he did in knock right? Not not cock. Hmm. He has rot reloading stuff or something like that. Maybe I'm I'm just going crazy. Well, I, I guess. Added here because and I, I specifically added after macros. So, so. I think you can do that in something like. Uh, how can I say? Like a... Oh man, what's the name of that guy? That, is, that stuff. Reflection. <laughs> but that's just another <laughs> thing. Uh, Well-behaved exceptions. That's cool. Uh, Dynamic classification. That's yeah, cool. Uh, the robot... Uh, I think this this one you added, right, Maggie? The robust rappel. What can you classify, like define what is a robust rappel? Uh, like not that sharp rappel. <laughs> like any lisp rappel that you can actually like have good support for like strings, print stuff, evaluate. Like anyway, like most rappels, like make that rappel meaningful. That's what I I mean. Because um, most of the time it's wait, just that like. Is a bit abstract for me, man. No, what I'm saying is, like, most of the time you bo don't bother using the REPL because it doesn't make sense. But I think it makes sense if you have partial reloading because we can just use the REPL. I actually, I actually think it's easier to have a useful REPL than having a rot reloading one. No, I use, yes, that's for sure. But what I'm saying here is, like, for example, think of Letris. We could do this, we could do stuff like just reloading the thing because of the REPL, right? Yeah, exactly. We could be testing stuff, bonking the, the thing. Yeah. Okay. So we still have, uh, do, do, does anybody remember what is Lambda core? Uh, I think it's just like Lambda. No, not. Yeah, but that's already in the design of Superware, I guess. Yes. Okay, so now we have. Uh, I think the easiest one to the easiest ones to classify at the moment are these two. This so two, this disjunctive pattern, pattern matching. Module and namespace system. Oh, that's very easy. That's very uh, easy. No fucking way. <laughs> I think that this the disjunctive pattern matching is doable. Uh, if module and namespace system is the thing that, like, the OCaml stuff, I don't know about that. Uh, it depends on what you mean with this, because, like, we have to have, basically, the R on the top level, but if you mean, like, nested patterns, then, well, we have to think about it, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the Cartesian product. Do you know what we're talking about, Nomageta? Uh, no. Yeah, disjunction of pattern matching is when you are able to nest uh, pattern matchings, uh, like patterns, and, um, oh man, I just, I just, like, can, can, can you, can you like, explain that? Think. I think you explain better than me, man. Um, um, is it just like sum and then pattern match the thing? And it then is a Cartesian the product of, of all the possible patterns that can have the thing. It is, uh, I don't I don't know how to explain it easy in the easy way. Nathan will give an example that will make it easy. Because I was talking we were talking about this that the OCaml has this and Haskell doesn't have. Oh right, I see. Like you join A A A A A A with B blah 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 and then show all the possible. Yeah, exactly. Things. It's kind of like that, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh. So yeah, so like that. So you have. All you have two in a, a, a some type here, like an option here, like you can be this or this, but it can be A with like B, A A with B, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I get it. So and then I discovered that the name of this in the, the in the Haskell in the Haskell uh, wiki is disjunctive pattern matching. Okay, so what let's. What does the call wait, it? Wait, wait, wait. They have it the name for a thing that they don't have. Yeah. They do. Ah. Yeah, but this is common though, because we also have 
what is it another feature that uh, uh, make it, uh, they probably have a name in the menu but i would say only our pattern or pattern yeah, does well, that exist in f sharp i don't think so right i never of tried of course of course <laughs> get wrecked my good i have never seen that i never maybe you that. already used it and the chance is like I pretty high remember, man. Let yeah, me see I think here. this needs F to sharp. come after this. Uh, nah, my F sharp rep was broken again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. That's what I was pushing that shit. <laughs> I, I got the idea. How important is a robust rep? Anyway. Okay, so now we have uh, dynamic classification, type extensions, module namespace system, and predictive polymorphism and type operators. I don't even know which one to start this this convert this part of the conversation go ahead Nathan, pick one uh, you know that for the well can you see this first one yeah it doesn't happen like with type inference okay cool uh, at least well not yeah not for type inference unless you have like annotation and stuff uh, yeah that would be a thing. And this is like a whole nother thing on the type system also, so I don't know. I see. Yeah, that, that seems a little bit uh, over the top at the moment. So maybe we should definitely add this to the pile of not doing today. Maybe next oh, time. Oh man, I, I did use that, Nathan. That's a stupid <laughs> man. Like, yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, that's very common actually. Like in... Uh, like I remember doing this on the, uh, you know those, uh, you know the compiler for Python on, uh -huh. uh, on Fable. Oh yeah. Fable Python. There is the thing when I was doing the, uh, what's the name of that thing, man? The for file management. Like the the module for file management. Like there is one section there that is essentially like one big pet, one big like type, which is just a union, and then you have like other things that go inside the union. So it's basically Cartesian as well. Yeah. So disjunctive better match. Yeah. So I uh, next we have three left: module, namespace, system, dynamic classification, type extensions. I don't remember the last two though. So this one is specifically just for the exceptions, but that will depend because that's basically like change. And if we have a uh, object system, because that's changing at the lifetime of an object the class of it. So it's like hopping types. Okay, but so, it's a class. Okay, so, so let's add desirable to this title. <laughs> <laughs> desirable features. And, and okay, and add that at the end here. What about these two? Uh, type extensions, I think, is just like... Is this what we're talking about? Like, we have A equals... Uh, I don't know, ABC string. And then you just do type A equals... And then, like, I don't know, static member. X. Oh! Wait, what the fuck? ABC. Like, is it what you're talking about? No, I, I don't know. Functions? I don't remember who, who had that, that thing. Not a clue also, and I don't know. Yeah, like, you, you can extend the type. That's all. Huh? Like, you're adding oh, or redefining. It, it's the same thing as this. Oh, you mean like in F sharp, right? Yeah, like, and then you can do scoped, like, for example, uh, in one module, you have uh, the type defined, like, I don't know, in a library, and then you just want to use, uh, you want to override some behavior. So you can just do something like override. Uh, oh, you can, you see? can in, like, almost like inherence, right? You yeah, like, for example, two string. Yeah. I did this today, for example, like, two string. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, Oops. we can add that to the impossible part of the list, which is the end. Uh, okay, now the last one is this. this. Does anybody have any idea if we should do this or not? Loop. Anyway, yeah, uh, mo the module system, it's probably harder than the type system that we want to do. Or something. Yeah, I think Dude, we should drop I... this this time and do it in another. I think we are just scared. 
But I don't think we should drop. I think we should leave it. Because, remember, it's desirable, right? We can remove it. Yeah, no, but in this time, it's not only desirable. Because the last time we talked about the desirable features, we talked about, let's dream. Let's imagine that we have superpowers. Let's dream, just let's click. <laughs> This time, it kind of needs to be sensible, right? We need to think about it. Because we are basically signing up our, suffer our suffering process. So... Oh, I don't know, man. Okay. I still don't think we should remove it. Okay, that's fine then. Okay, so let, I'm going to read it from top to bottom. And the the order matters. So the, the top... Uh, the, the, the first one is the easiest one, and the, the bottom one is the hardest uh, hardest one. Silver, so I'm not sure what the first one means. You mean only the syntax, right? Because the language itself yeah. doesn't have much. Yeah, yeah. no, Silvo, no, it is not actually, Just not only using. the syntax. We, uh, what I want oh. is to be able to grab a file from the other repos, remove the variadic part, and compile. Yeah, that's the syntax. <laughs> Uh, and you have the same result. I, can, I also want to have the same result, of course. So the first thing is basically to ke keep up with what we already had before. So silver 90% backwards compatibility. Then ADTs, better matching, disjunctive better matching. And by the way, you guys can change the order or propose to change the order if you think if it fits. <laughs> better matching, disjunctive better matching, then Haskell guards, type inference. Parametric polymorphism. Um, I actually think that I want to propose to change this to go before that. Yeah, uh, this is the kind of thing that you break everything. <laughs> Did we remove system F? Uh, it was in the... Yeah, system F, Omega Operator. Uh, it was in one of the topics that I think we removed. We have like parametric polymorphism. Yeah. Oh, before type inference. Be <laughs> before before everything. No, of course, like it's the. No, vi vi wait. No, this is the order of we should do. Yeah, I don't think param parametric polymorphism should come before it is. Because for me, that, that yeah, doesn't so... even make sense. Uh, it does. Like, take a look on the expression type that we have. Let me see. Where's that? Source. Uh, no, not app? source. App, sorry. Oh, OK. So, so that's our core. Like, it doesn't have the extensions of things like records and some types. And it doesn't even have the base types like ints and booleans. So that's the core. And it already has that. So it's basically implementing the type checking for stuff. And you already have it. Like, Where it's the simplest thing to implement. Wait. wait. We are talking about, I think we're talking about two different things. Because when I'm talking about parametric polymorphism, I'm talking about this. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Like the, e like the, oh, pulse. no, no. That, those are like type operators yeah, slash it. constructors. That's a different thing. That's no, what yeah, we rule out. Yeah, no, that's fine. But uh, in every book that I read, this is called parametric polymorphism. Wow. What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's also strange the way that they name it. But yeah, that's like another thing. Okay. I'm talking about like system F stuff. Oh, okay. So it is system F. Yeah, like having stuff. plus dot. <laughs> <laughs> right at the. That's lovely. What is plus dot, man? Plus dot. I'm just talking like Okomo. Oh, man, my screen is flickering. Oh, but that has nothing to do with. Okay, so no, let's I'm just saying like this. features. So I don't. I'm not gonna have. Uh, we're not gonna have. So this is type. So this is what I meant with. What I meant with part. This is type operators. So let's do that. Um, this is what I meant. Let me just add the stuff here to install. That's cool. So. I do believe that this should come after, not, uh, not before ADTs. Hello? Is anybody there? Uh, 
Yeah, that's like two things. Like one thing is we consider doing that, that it's not like crazy, uh, but it is like a whole other level on the core that we are doing. Uh, and that is the thing on the order to implement. Like, I I'm not sure, like, not sure if it matters much. Uh, yeah, not sure if it matters much, but uh, I would go for implementing the core type system first and then the extensions because it's easier to know what things impact which in yeah, the I sense like that. Did we so, change anything here? Oh, yeah. No. I changed the. No, no, uh, on top on the Haskell file. Oh, no, no, we didn't change. Okay. Uh... So, what are you talking about? Yeah, so let, I'm renaming what I was calling parametric polymorphism to type operators. Uh, and I think we should do that before ad hoc polymorphism, which is like AKA type classes. And I think that this would be already be the core. We already have the core at this point. What do you think, Nathan? Uh, it depends. What do you mean? Like... I think type. I think type classes that are inferring there has more than we were thinking. Uh, yeah, that that's that's totally a possibility that we can. Because I think that includes like subtyping as well. Oh, we didn't add subtyping. Yeah, we didn't add subtyping. Um, maybe. Oh, it might be implicit already somewhere. Let me see. No, I don't think so. I think we should Haskell explicitly guards. be explicit about that. What are Haskell guards? Is it the same thing you have in Swift? Or something like this, like uh, you don't execute this if you found like an if or something like this. Um, I don't know. I remember. Oh, the Has where. The where is no, that? The, no, the where is not the Haskell guards. What do you mean by Haskell guards? Uh, is the thing that I was talking to Nathan again. I, I'm forgetting the conversations. But we were talking about having, I don't know, a function, and then you have, you have like a you pattern match on the function signature like this and then you can or already do like a minus 10 equals this like this is already oh, like uh oh, i see like in erlang when we're doing like full uh i when? don't think it's like uh, yeah yeah, yeah I like think like this head, like you you saw the win right but yeah, like you know that you thing. have one condition in the win if you are matching this or not Think about you could do a switch case on the when. So switch? actually, you can. Mm, yeah, you can do. Like I, this, I don't know if you can. You can do like this, more. Uh, uh, but I get, I get the idea. And then it's like the function, right? You, you can just keep that. You can just do. Oh, I'm deleting. Sorry. <laughs> and then you can say, "I would like this." So you can pattern match, and then, and then you do a switch case with the conditions. Yeah, it's like the well. It, we have the function, uh, but like function, and then you can just match. Is it the same thing? I don't, I don't know if think I'm getting so. it. Like uh, when you do this, like F sharp. You have like F sharp, and you match stuff. Uh huh. And you can have a guard. Let me see. Right. Yeah. Uh, but that's the thing. You have a guard that is expecting like a boolean expression here, and yeah. that will like determines if the thing will like match or not to execute this branch, right? But yeah. in Haskell, this thing here, it's like has like multiple branches. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know how to represent the syntax part. No, I can't. I know how to present because in Haskell you can do you do like things like this. Uh... Uh, a and then minus uh, no greater than. Let me say like in a simpler way, like you have like different like clauses here, right? Like yeah, for what you're matching, and you have a predicate for the guard. In Haskell, you have multiple like, guards. It allows for you each to make match multiple. Clause. Okay, so it's just like a nested. Well, this is so, not nested. No, I get it, but it's just like it, as if it is nested. Is that it? Uh, yeah, you you are net you are not nested. Yeah, but you are that's it. That's. 
Uh, but that's what that's what you did indeed, Nagita. Okay. Like, even though, yeah. Yeah, so th th this is this is the same code, Magetta. This this piece in F sharp and this one that I'm highlighting here. So I'm instead of sure having they have pass... some. So it's just to avoid me typing this, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you're gonna have different branches in Haskell. You pattern match only once, and then you will, and then you guard, and then you can have multiple branches in the guard part instead of having only one expression to do the guarding part. But I'm not 100% sure. But the behavior semantics like it's 100 percent equal like i would not like to count matching like uh per load library with immutable data structures and built-ins yeah so uh, uh, uh good enough prelude to do stuff uh Maybe we should actually list, right? What do we classify okay. as a prelude? So, mm -hmm. Boolean type. What the fuck? Yeah, so we don't have to define those. It's already built in. List. Oh, why uh, don't we allow the person to? to no, we're them. gonna allow that. We're gonna allow it, but we're also gonna provide some like default ones. Yeah, you can't do list. Why? Because you would need recursive types and type operators. Ooh. Oh, we should add that yeah. at some point in here. So recursive yeah, types. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> recursive types. I have one thing that I don't think it is insanely hard. It's not easy, but it's not very hard. And that's very cool and adds an, an, another flavor for the Man, language. Please don't say active father. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no I kind of... Oh, man, no. A, a dude at work asked about uh, active patterns this week. That was pretty... Pretty funny. Anyway, because I basically made an active pattern with Moo. <laughs> the thing. That, was, that was beautiful. All right, so... Uh, here, uh, I think I showed not the, the the project of the dude uh, that he's basically doing a temporal logic based Hindu oh, linear shit. type system. Blah, blah blah. Like I think I showed that, and he's using uh, modal logic uh, to expand the type system. So he's doing stuff like uh, in modal logic, you're talking about quantitative operators in terms of possible scenarios from this world that you are in. Mm -hmm. So you might think it you might think it's something like um uh, let me think here. Uh uh, uh something like, like no no like you represent X operator and you have contingency, which is a diamond. And then like you work you work on different worlds derived from a state. So it's like a machine state. So you can you can really tell that we can do that with recursion and so on. But anyway. Uh, and then, like, imagine you have a world one, and then you have n worlds that come from this. And if all the all those worlds are possible, then the the world P is is true. The clause is true. So, and then you can say, okay, so it's square P because that's necessarily true because all the oh, wait, Maget, derived Maget, words Maget, Maget. from this. I don't think you will be able to explain to us, or at least to which you understand, like only you saying stuff like. Yeah, we, yeah, I think we should show. have to have some more examples. We can we can discuss that offline or maybe in the next session. Okay. That's fine. Oh, that's especially yeah, because can, I, can I, send the, I didn't say in the but archive that we are doing. I'm this just saying because <clears throat> I'm just saying this because I I think we sh we can add not we should but we can add different twists to the to the stuff we're doing. Yeah, no. If just add if you if you have a title for it, just add probably at the end if it's something a little bit more out of like. Uh, Let me just study here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but just for to give you a context, uh, Lenos, like you saw that we are not adding stuff like dependent types or. Yeah, we can. Things like algebraic <laughs> uh, <laughs> effects. Dude, what dependent more, uh, types, linear we, would do, types. we would have to do some like evaluation in the thing, in the type checking. I don't want to, I want to think of that. Yeah, so all of those. We are not adding there. 
And this one, it's probably even worse than the others. Because, <laughs> yeah, because the others, we have like languages implementing that stuff. Even the algebraic effects, we have some that are like implementing now, only now. And it still has like research on it. Uh -huh. This one, I think, would be even crazier. <laughs> Just give you the context. <laughs> well, now Magetta said that it's not as crazy as you may think, so we're gonna add Wait, it there. Wait, this one? Yeah. I don't think it is crazy, man. It looks crazy, but it's not. <laughs> really. Yeah, that's that's what Nathan is saying. He's saying that it's at the same level of some of. No, some I'm saying it's worse. Adding. Yeah, he's saying it's worse than those. So because we are, we have stuff that we we had in the dream list that we are not adding here because they are too. No, no, we didn't. If even I were to put it on the way it is, <laughs> if I were to put it on on here, I think it would be here because it is a little harder than type inference, I guess, but not as hard as possibly macros. So I don't think it is impossible. Yeah, no. Anyway, that's just the, leave no, it. That, that's the thing. We can, computer. if we have someone that thinks that it, it is doable, right? Because we need to be honest, right? We have a lot of stuff that we think it's harder AF, but Breno already showed us that it's not. Multiple times in my experience. Oh wait, wait. now you are being <laughs> too general. That's no, no, not no. the case. The his presentation that he did was the like the fourth time. Yeah, that's that one thing, that right? That he showed me to me. Something that I, I was sure it would be hellish and it was not as bad. Like fourth or fifth time that I know him. Yeah. And that uh, I, I keep saying, man, this sounds too hard. And he's saying, no, it's not as hard. And if Magetta has any sort of power as Breno has to say stuff like that, I'm, I'm totally okay leaving this here. I will investigate and try to come up with an example. Okay. So anyway, I changed the order a little bit. So after 90%, ADT, pattern matching, disjunctive, disjunctive pattern matching, guards, recursive types, and after that, a prelude. Because after recursive types, you can have lists. So uh, until this point, I would put this as a, like a major miles, milestone, actually. I would actually put this as like phases. Phase one. What do you guys think? Okay, how are you planning to split the phases, by the way? Yeah, when we have uh, uh, an M a MVP, right? A minimum viable product. I would consider this to be a minimum viable product for this project. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, but you left the type operators from. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm. Oh, yeah, the, the type operators are necessary to have the list, right? Yep. Okay, so let's add that he there. You know, really, I um, mean, I'm really building Cabal. Kill me. Yeah, you should have. Ah, I saw we don't even have like recursion. Yeah, you you should have you should have. Oh yes, up. that's true. Uh, anyway, so this would be phase one. So we have. ADT is better matching, and uh, disjunctive better matching, wards, recursive type, sub operators, and a prelude. I would guess, like, let's put it here. I would guess six months for this. Yeah, really? Yeah. It's really gonna. <laughs> Wait, you're like Six months is. Yeah, I think yeah, it's gonna take I, six months for to do all of that. Just for yeah, us to have an idea. All my RAN is being used, I think that's my I need to see swap right you now. What the fuck? Wait, what are you doing? You have a lot of memory, <laughs> man. Like what are you doing indeed? Yeah. And now I'm not using my my Are you still no, running I'm using Cabal there? like in parallel? So it's like using oh. your... uh, but just oh, for us man. to have an idea how Wait, much it took for the other language. We took two months to do the other one. Really? Yeah. Holy. Okay, now I see why you guys think about six months. Yeah, but that was in Erlang and, and LFA. And we, we, we did two things at the same time, right? Like in yeah, but different still languages. Was, yeah, but it still was like deadly simple language. Like Besides the problems with tooling, the language itself like was... 
literally like would be like here Lemos. like here would be the language that he did he didn't have like anything you know <laughs> literally <laughs> Anyway, I, I, I divided the phases and I put some times on it. Let's and put a starting date there, just so we can <laughs> can see. If we that can see the, the commits. Game. We can also see the commits, but you can add yeah. this. For me, that's fine. So let's put what what is today? Thirty uh, September twenty twenty two. And then we can put I don't know a bunch of X's, I guess. X, X. Not this year. Not this year. Definitely not ah, 2022. Ah. <laughs> you might be surprised. What? Oh, you you're typing there, my kid. I don't know why you're not talking though. Because it will chop. Okay. I did. You did in two hours. Yeah, I know. We know. We know. The, uh, uh, you did in lunch. Uh, yeah, we are gonna, also gonna remember. I don't think having the same as we already have in, will be. Yeah, I also don't think so. I don't think the the first to do is gonna take that much that that longer. Actually, I expect this to be two session stops and a little bit of offline, maybe. I would say that today, like starting now and maybe going a little bit further, we could have something much more cool than the last language. <laughs> At least for type C, not evaluation. Okay, so let's use the, 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 the smallest bet at, uh, that, that anybody, of, anybody has to offer. Okay, so phase one, four months. Uh, which will include every, everything that we already did, ADTs, pattern matching, the other pattern matching, guards, recursive types, type operators, and a privilege. That's actually not a bad bet, man. <laughs> then, like those two are the only ones that are like harder. And those two are just something that you really have to think about. Yeah. But the rest is like simple. Yeah. And then phase two would be type inference, type classes, object system, making it compile. I, I'm actually going to bump up this to one year. Uh, because... Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. 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 I think we probably will stop the project like somewhere there. Oh, you think we're going to stop? That would be my bet. <laughs> I'm saying we would. Like, oh, okay. and that's my bet. Anyway, so type classes, object system, compilable, being able to, compa to compile the thing, macros, robust and useful repo, hot, hot partial reload. Uh, yeah, we should. We should be professional. <laughs> Let's be professionals. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a bunch of overhead for this project, man. No, that's not an overhead. Like This is like 30 minutes of doing stuff. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> event is overhead. <laughs> no, of course, especially in this project. <laughs> like our focus here is not to ship stuff, right? Or is it? Man, but if you if you think about it, if you finish something along the lines of phase two, man, this is a heck of a project. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it is. No, I'm totally with you, Maget. We should have management. I'm, I don't understand what Nathan is talking about. Uh... While also... Having to take care. I can just speak now, I guess. Nice. Finish. Cool. So what I was saying is, like, 
uh, what I what I think Text Juggler helps you with is managing, like sorting the tasks. Because think about this: like we have stuff that we need to do serially. So, like I, I don't know, task A needs to be done after task B because, well, that's a dependency. Uh, but they have like weights that we might not consider. So we are shipping, like we're shipping, <laughs> we're shipping to nowhere. But anyway, <laughs> we're like completing some tasks first that wouldn't take that long time. Uh, so you're shipping faster in that sense at the same time that you are focused and it's shopping you know, making the stuff that is from here as well man is it back? yeah it's yeah, the, like, let All me right. ask you what is the problem that that solves? Well, the problem is that we might not see, uh, well, you want if you want to ship all of this together then it's not a problem but if you want to, if we, we could add some tasks here instead of any of them. That's a possibility. Wait, uh, I didn't go ahead. Change yeah, the tasks in between again. phases. Oh, man. Changing, changing tasks between phases. Yeah, like, for example, if you want to add type inference in this phase, let's, let's suppose that's possible. Like, if we wait and we schedule the thing, and it has no dependencies and so on, blah, 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 then we can just add it here. Wait, I can see what is the help that we get from the test juggler doing that. Do you know that if doing all of this, how much time it will take, how we're going to be doing this on test juggler, what's the weight of each task, what are the dependencies in between them? So I don't know. That's the problem. So, okay, is it a system for help you with priorities? It gives you prior like the scheduling thing makes a schedule of the things you should do first to finish the most faster. I mean, like, okay, not about the system, but what you want to achieve with it. Is it a better way for you to define your your priorities? To I want to make the most features for silverware with a time bound. Two yeah, years, man. Yeah, he wants to add yeah. a deadline for each part of it, which makes sense because this add, add this adds pressure on us, and I think it's uh, it adds extra like uh, at least for me when I when I know I have a deadline for something, I work harder to make it in uh, before the deadline until the deadline. Yeah, but people but people don't like managing stuff, so ignore it. Just forget about it. Nothing no, no, but no, no. Outside. I am. I vote for having like, some management. You guys sure can like. Do the organization manage? Yeah, but because think of this, we have but, a backlog. We have we can track the state of the stuff. We can do everything there. It's just a matter to be organized. You guys can do that. I would just saying that I will not take part on, like, how can I say, like, oh, let's try to like finish this to ship it tomorrow or something like that. You see. No, we're not gonna be not like not sleeping Dude, that's not 24 7 or something like that. Yeah, that's not gonna, that's it's not not gonna a happen. Job. Yeah, it's not a job. It's just a little bit more adding a little bit more of the daily day to day behavior that we usually would have, but without the sacrificing weekends and sacrificing sleep time, without all of that. It should be a little bit more realistic, right? I think I think it's actually it proves to everybody that's somehow if we make this everybody's gonna put this in the resume. There's no way. <laughs> so Th that's uh, that's what <laughs> I'm trying to put here. Like it's actually a good opportunity to be organized and like yeah, get used to these good tools. Like yeah, I agree. But anyway, if you don't want to follow it, Nata, you are free to do that. We are, I'm not gonna obligate anybody to do anything. I'm gonna follow. Not Maggette maybe will follow, but. We don't have We're to gonna fall. do Scrum. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> no, That's no, thank just you. Just your screen. Okay, so let's continue Next here. Next step is I, daily. I added a few, uh, one more month, just because of CI. Okay. Uh, just one thing, like you're thinking of one year for this entire thing, or one year parting from no, this? No, one year for this entire thing. Okay, uh, let me see. Type inference, classes, object system, compatible. Compilable, macros, robust and useful REPL, hot partial. I would say just because of this, then I agree with one year. But <laughs> if it were without it, I think it I think it could be like six months. 
Ooh, you think you think you're gonna have we're gonna take six months to make it Let, work? Let's see, Fresh let's see. How, I gotta think of sessions, right? So we're we in a month we now have two sessions per yeah. uh day, per week, yeah. right? We have four hours. Basically eight sessions. Yeah, eight hours a month. Eight 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 That's why I wanted month. to measure. So we have eight sessions a month. Mm -mm. In eight sessions a month, how many sessions do you think this takes? Type inference. The only not can tell. How many hours does that, that take? Uh, I would say maybe three. No, sorry, Nata. Not a clue. Not a clue. Okay, so my get my guess my get this guess is six hours. Yeah, my guess is three. My guess is three. Yeah. Then type classes. <sighs> yeah, part of the reason why I, I put it one year and two years on an, in phrase three is because a lot of this stuff you're gonna have to study. It's not like before, yeah. because in, in Silverware non plus, we basically did some things ad hoc and some things properly, and that, that was it. We don't we didn't have to spend like a week reading a book about it. So in these other topics in the phase two off uh, on like further, I think you're gonna have to do a lot of that. So that's why I added one year for that. But I don't. I don't think we should measure this, man. We don't know how this will go. Like, let's just measure phase one, and then the rest we can sort later. No, but this is not a measurement. Like, this is like bet. No. Yes, but why? Why bet now since we don't have any input from here? Because like, it's that's fun. That's what I'm saying. Betting is fun when you don't have anything to lose. <laughs> bet is fun. It's fun. Oh man. Uh, anyway, my if bet I go is to one a year. Casino, I'm gonna phase three, two years. Uh, but just because of these two. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you do this, you can actually use to do's. No. Like, oh, cool. If you do with the dash, you can't. Oh, okay. So no. we can change Control D. Control D. Yeah. Why can't I? Yeah. And then we change. For a second, okay. Steam like typed multiple times the same thing. Okay, done. Anyway, so, yeah, I think we have a plan. I don't know if it is a good plan. It seems to be okay. Does anybody have any pro any problem with any of the division, like the order, or if, does it seem fine? This is okay to me. I just wish we could do this part faster, but I think it's better to set a good foundation first. Yeah, I, I actually... Now that you now that you said, I kind of want to make com making it compilable before I have adding extra stuff that requires a lot of reading. Uh, so we can like we can make it interpret like we use an interpreter for all of phase one, and then the beginning of phase two we transform it to make it compilable, and then we add the extra nuances to the type system and add object or, or no object system and macros and stuff like that. Uh, is, are you okay, Nathan? Mm -hmm. Wait, what? With, do you have any problems, man? That's what I want to uh, know. Not really. Okay, so we can save this. We can commit this. This would be fun, by the way. To do I this. hope so. I, I really... <laughs> if we make... Every, man, if we because, dude, <laughs> at least it's not like a shitty language. Like, again, thank you. Yeah, it's not your lang, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but uh, one thing to consider is it's not a shitty language, but you can do shitty code in any language. Oh, yeah. No, I can, but that, that's much better than doing shitty... The shitty code in Haskell, I guess it's better than the shitty code that I, can, mm -hmm. I was writing in your lang. Yeah, shitty code in Unless I'm using basically... unsafe perform IO and shit, which No, are, we are not using not that. Do. I can pretty much guarantee we are not using that. We are using functions that are using that, but we are not using. Uh, so wha what is important is, is that shitty has code. And I can totally tell you can write shitty, shitty code. I actually deal with that daily. <laughs> the tagging system, beauty. Uh, anyway, yeah, if we accomplish, man, something, if we stop, like we get pissed to get tired in the middle of phase two, I'm gonna be already happy. I can already tell. 
And it's not like we have, for instance, this is just a, an hypothesis, right? We can finish phase one and we get tired out of, out of it and we can stop, do something else and later come back to it. That's also a possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because, oh man, it's going to be so We can do fun. our text editor, right? And then do our, yeah. and then use our text editor <laughs> to <call> this. <laughs> yeah. You, imagine that for a moment. <laughs> Imagine that, man. That would be like, people would look at us and ask, "What are you guys doing, man?" <laughs> anyway, so did you already commit this, Magetta? Uh, no, I did not. Let me do that. Dude, is this doing building, man? What the heck? Yeah, your in our machine is taking much longer than mine did not not done, so I guess. Ah, oh, man. And yes, not on the F sharp FS autocomplete was still open since yesterday. <laughs> Consuming 100% of my CPU. That's why I thought what's pause because this commit part I, I I paused. Okay, so going to the interpreter now. Now that that now that we know, can you explain to us uh, piece by piece, uh, Nathan? Wait just a second. Okay, so the first thing is to have a file for these Let's things. Let's see. That's the same grammar you were we were talking about the other day, is it, Nathan? Uh, grammar? Like the we are using the same grammar? Oh no, this is just the the silverware grammar. So Lemus, mm. uh, go. I guess that especially you should be doing the evaluation part because of learning reasons yeah uh, but yeah like we have expressions mm -hmm. so like we have like our base types ints and booleans and shit here we only have a unit for now mm -hmm. right so you have like the basic lambda calculus stuff so you have a variable yeah you have abstraction, so mm -hmm. you have a label for the parameter and you have expression for the body. But yeah. you do need a type for the parameter, right? Because, well, type it language. Uh, you do have the application as normally, express, expression applied in expression. And this is the new stuff for the system. What is, what is the string in the abstraction? Uh, parameter. Like parameter name. Label, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. But what if you have an abstraction with multiple uh, stuff? Well, then you have a function that returns a function. Oh, we're going to do the... Cur okay. Okay, cur curring. Uh, okay, an application. And what is, the, what is going on with the E-type stuff? Okay, so if you take a look... It's kind of the same thing as abstraction, right? Yeah. So you do have a parameter and you do have a body. Yeah. What changes is that it doesn't have a type. But we are also abstracting over something. So that label here will be used inside the expression. And in the future, it will be like applied to a concrete thing, right? So some substitution on those labels, those placeholders, those variables, for something like real, concrete. But here, we are abstracting over types. So this here... Can you write an example of, of can, that? Just one, just one question, like grammatically, yeah. like syntactically question. Can we add something like a label, like this? I don't think we can. No, oh, We could do a record, exactly. but... No, you can do a record for the, to do that if you want. Like we are no. just using, we are even using strings. I'm gonna change everything because we, I don't want. I want to use properly Haskell code this time, so we're not gonna use strings and stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna change everything for. Text. We're, we're gonna use our amazing abstraction of like ASCII. <laughs> no, it's gonna be text, which is a faster version of strings. Oh man, ASCII. That was the the pinnacle. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I just want an example of an E-type abstraction, as we were doing with the grammar before, not to, just to make you understand what is. Oh. 
because un e units, e variable string, e application for me, well, all of them are fine. I just want to remember that this is the return type. Uh, what is no, this type? No, no, that's exactly? the parameter type. Oh, so this is the parameter, and this is its par its type. Its type. And yeah. This is the body. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So this is also fine for me. These two, I, I just need. I, I kind of want examples to. Shouldn't we do that? Never mind. We're gonna do pairing. So okay, you see that we have a function here where I'm highlighting, right? Where are you? Oh, here. Okay. So we have a function. That, oh shit! Wait. Okay. So we have a function that receives b and returns b. So it's yeah. the identity, right? Yeah. Uh, and b has a type a. So what is a? A in this case is a type variable, but where is the type variable introduced? Here. So introduce it here. Oh yeah, this is very future. This is for future proofing then. I'm not sure what you mean by future proofing. Yeah, because this is very very far on the future that you're gonna have things like oh this is a type variable introduced by a for all. No, it's literally everything here. Wait. Okay, so a function. Okay, so this is a function that grabs an A and returns another f another function, right? Yeah, uh, read that as when it doesn't have the type, it is like introducing a type. So you see uh, that here? Okay, this A is the same A as this one. Okay. Yeah, so here it's just like oh. using a, a different like syntax, right? This way like it's easier to understand. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the string would be B, right? Uh, no, the string no. would be A. Oh, this is, oh, now I, I yeah, see. That's why we have the E ty the type in the beginning to make it clear that, oh, this is for type variables. Okay, so this is going to be A, and what is the expression then? Like here. Oh, the entire like, thing. This is the body of the for all, per se. Oh, so we are uh, modeling this entire thing now. So this, the, the, the A is the string, and the expression is this. Yeah, I think the easiest way to think about it is to think about it in the sense of what the fuck is an abstraction. Mm -hmm. So the simplest case, we have like 1 plus 1, right? Mm -hmm. But, well, I want to do a sum, but I want to change like what the second thing is. So for that, I will abstract this. I will call this a placeholder. And I will say that this is the notation for like denoting that this will receive a concrete thing and then he will like substitute inside here, right? Yeah. So this is abstraction, abstracting for an expression. Yeah. This thing here will receive a value. Yeah, in it future. is the same thing, but in the level of types instead of the level of... Yeah, you receive a type and yeah, you receive a type. And that type you use in the way you want, like inside the expression that you're returning, right? Okay, so let's make uh, the type signature of the evaluator now that I can read this. Oh, we have the value also, so go go on. The value? <sighs> yeah, what is the value? Data oh, value. wait, uh, this one you got it, right? Like you need to apply a type to the, to the type abstraction. Uh, you need to apply a type. Yeah, Isn't that so, for like type constructors or something like that? No, like I just told you, like he's abstracting over type, right? So it yeah. will receive a type in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's the type application, like expression is oh, a type okay, of abstraction. Okay. okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is the type that will be applied on the okay. type of abstraction. Okay. Uh, and something to highlight is on the types also, even before like values and shit. Okay. Because you do have the base types like unit, right? Uh, you have the arrow that you already are familiar with, mm -hmm. but those two are the like new ones. This is to describe the type of a type of instruction, right? So it will say that, oh, what is the type of this? It's the type that receives A and returns something of this type, right? Mm -hmm. So it would be something like, oh, this thing here, has the following type, right? 
Bro, I don't know if he got the variable, the T variable. We're gonna go at, we're gonna get there. I also don't need to understand. For all. Oh. For all A, I will receive something A and return A, right? So yeah. what would be the type of it. The type variable, well, it, it's wait, little... wait, wait, is this the type of an E type abstraction, right? Uh, this thing here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, just it. Yeah, uh, and the type, yeah, the type, the T, okay, the T variable <laughs> is the type variable. Uh, do you have an example of that? Yeah. Uh, what is the type of B? A. A? Yeah, it's the type <laughs> variable. Oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right. Okay, makes sense now. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm satisfied. Ah, uh, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... The that's value it. has a native function. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so value, like the value unit, Right, so this expression evaluates to this. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So this is like the value of abstraction, right? And this is for a native function. So closure is just like abstraction, like with its environment, right? Mm -hmm. So no secret there. Yeah. And native function, it's what we did on the last project. Like it receives a value mm -hmm. and it returns a value. So. We Shouldn't we are add already uh, integers and bones? Well, we sure can. Uh, let, let's do just these now and like the lambda, and then we do the the stuff. We do like conditions and the the rest. Yeah. Okay. So, but I have a question though. I do have a question. So. Hmm. Oh no no no. Okay, I got I got it. Okay, native function. You grab something and return something out of it. Yeah. yeah, but that is a thing, Lemus. Uh, this year, like, it would be better if we had a proper map, right? Yeah, we're going to have a map. Although you can transform a list of tuples into a map, there is a function specifically for that. We're going to use proper maps, though, so... Just yeah. one thing, like, why a value mm -hmm. on the native function? Oh, value Shouldn't it be an expression? Like, mm -hmm. why a value? Why a value? Yeah, because you, you can just send a function, like a, I have a closure. I think that is just no reason why, because if you have the expression, the only mm -hmm. thing that you could do more than that would be choose when to evaluate. But that is no point on that. Like, uh, wait, choose when to evaluate? No, wait, wait. Yeah. I think it, you look at your example, Magetta. You said, oh, what if this is a closure? Yeah, but a closure is a value. Because I'm thinking of a closure as the... No, okay, I see. But you're not thinking of closure as holding... Because I was thinking of the closure as having a... Like, a, we were using it on the on Silverware just for denoting a function. And a, a function bound in a certain context, yeah. right? That's yeah, not the same usage here. Uh, it's, like, literally the same usage here. So Can you explain uh, more, then? Yeah. Why? So, suppose we have this. Oh, wait. Uh, let me do that. Uh, okay. So, uh, this here will evaluate the expression and attribute to the label. So, here it will evaluate the, uh, like, integer expression to an integer value, right? Uh, and here is the same thing. You have expression on the right, you have a label on the left, and you will evaluate that. What is the value that a function evaluates to? It's a closure. So it yeah. will have like its parameter Yeah, but name. I'm talking about like int. Int, okay. Yeah, like x equals one. Like that's okay. not a closure. No, that's not a closure. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it was strange, like value there. Yeah, but we didn't. Ha we didn't. Uh, I, think Nathan, I think Nathan didn't add literals. Um, 
Like we only have. Units. Oh, okay. So I see. I see. See. So you just plan to add more here. That's what. Okay, I get it. Yeah, you like it can be look strange, but you will need an expression type and value. Like there are different. Yeah, things. that's that's a fine. That's Another fine. thing that I want to ask. So in in comparison to silverware, and literals are not expressions anymore. Huh? Uh, what? Yeah, because as far as I understood, I understood literals are now of values. Yeah, that's no, 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 no. Take a look. Uh, where do you have unit in the code? All places. No, to have. Yeah. So you have an expression that is a unit, right? So mm -hmm. what does that evaluate to? It evaluate the expression unit has type unit and evaluates to the value unit. Yes. So it is an expression, right? Oh, but why make to... it an expression? Uh, okay. So it, it shouldn't be look... like. My question is like it could be like we were doing like a generic literal. Generic literal. Yeah, because yeah, like before, literal. before we had something like data literal, right? But and we could we, in we and then we can have like L uh, unit L uh, L int. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, and L. Um, and I guess it's just not the way it's organized right now. But it's the same thing. Yeah, but it's literally the same thing. It's just a matter of you putting in another thing. Mm -hmm. like, right? It will yeah, be the here, same code. Too. Here, yeah, but then we would do, correct me if I'm wrong, we would do L literal and then literal here? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. You only add like the types, the value and stuff. Yeah, and we also have to add yeah. the type. No, no. Oh, wait, now I'm confused. You just remove this way. Because integer is a type, right? Yeah. Integer, yeah, but it's not here. Oh, I see. Well, because you just added it here, right? And you didn't add any types. Yeah, but this is this is then wrong, I guess, right? Because we no. should add to the types, because integer is a yeah, type. Well, we sh yeah, we should add to the types, definitely. Okay. So, uh, ty t integer and t um yeah so we have three levels to 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 play with we have something the type level the this expression level and the value level is that correct mm -hmm. yes okay so I just said the bool as well that's the thing i think we're going to use adts to make bool right okay so <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna no, but uh, I take that back because we need to t t test conditions. So, uh, yeah. I would just say that then you could literally do unit, you could do integer, you could do rational, all with ADTs. No, it, but it, we're gonna have to use piano numbers to make the integers, and I have absolutely no well. And you also could use those to make rationals. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, <But>. thank you. <laughs> But I don't think I, I really like I said we need to test stuff a little bit before having ADT so well, we can have the bull now here. And we would expect a long time because it needs <laughs> recursive <laughs> types and type operators to implement integers also. Okay, so what about values though? What is the value of a literal? Well, you could do whatever. <laughs> you could do a value literal that is like nested, you could do flat, like Hey, it can be Oh, but wait, that's not, you're not thinking of that, right? You're like, you need to go specifically on what it is. Right? I'm, like, for I'm example. Why. Oh, by the way, shouldn't we have uh, things here as well? Mm -hmm. You should, right? I don't know how is this types in Haskell. Yeah, but it I'm is like that. Guessing. You need. Oh. We should, yeah, well, yeah, we, need, we, yeah, don't, good we point. don't need, right? A rational, how is uh, yeah, it's like rational as well. And then boo is boo is well. boolean. Okay. Uh, and then here we just add literal, and then that's fine, I guess. Yeah, but, but then here's then, the wait. But no, I... wait. No, wait. We need here like literal also. We need to carry the type, right? Yeah, but Isn't then I think. Yeah, but then this? I think we need to make this parametric, not them, right? Huh? Yeah, because. We got. We need just to have something here, right? Wait. I I didn't get what you mean by having. Man, the, okay, the type. The, the type here, right? You mean? 
wait, 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 wait. Uh, I'm talking about this line, 23. Okay. Yeah, I see. Okay. So you cannot only have the tag, you need to have the... Yeah, the type of no. expression. So yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, man. Oh, you could change the names, of course. Yeah, because here's the problem, like, we can add it here, but then, like, it means that a literal now could be something like an arrow. Huh? But that's... How is that an arrow? Like, no, man, I'm saying our representation here is just this. Like, you're carrying the type, right? So you have a unit... Dude, I'm confused with this nesting. I'm also confused yeah. a little bit. Uh, yeah, so first of all, we already know that they are the same thing. What is the thing that changes in practice? It's that instead of doing a more flat pattern matching, we'll be a more, nest, a more nested. So instead of putting here integer, boolean, blah, 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 they yeah. always hide one. So you match the literal and then you match again what is inside. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, I really would recommend going with the flat one because like, uh, it's just like easier to pattern match. But this is also literally the same thing. Yeah, but then I have okay. a question. Yeah, I do believe I have a, wait. E literal uh, is holding a be... type, is that correct? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, okay, I get what you mean, Lemus. Like, yeah. if we consider this to be types, then it's already just... because it's That's what I was talking about, by the way. Like, if we separate from here, like... Okay, we're carrying a type in a literal. But that would mean that a type can oh, be this. Folks. Not that we are going to consider... No, we're gonna, folks, like, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, like, see type here. Yeah. The only places that they are in expression are the type of a parameter and the type being applied to a type of abstraction. So they have no relation with literals and other kinds of expression. We don't have expressions inside types also. Yes, that's what I'm saying. No, wait, okay. I, my, my question is the following. My question is the following. So this type underscore in line seven is being used only on for abstra e abstraction and e type application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then my question is, uh, the, these type underscores are completely not related to typing literals. Typing literals? Yeah, because literals, they have their type, right? We are, we are creating Yeah, yeah, them, yeah, right? but, but see, see, they are expressions. When I type check that expression, I will give you a type. Why do we need this? I think that's my the more, more why more, do we need this yeah this that I'm no, we, need to hold, we need to hold the value right but the yes. value is down here uh, no no <laughs> the host language value yeah, okay i get what i mean that's what i was gonna say yeah this is like uh for example what is a unit representation Let's... oh like a bool would be true and false for example, okay, so the value, case. data value is the value of Silverware Plus, and here is the value yeah, of like, the host. Like, for example, we could do something like this. Oh, okay, okay, so the data value is the value that the the language that we are making is holding. This yeah, is the instruction for yeah. that. Yeah, but when you mean value of the host language, we mean the things that it carries inside. We yes. are not, like, yes. saying the literal. No, it's not a literal, it's the values inside. Like, this is a yeah, number. Like, and this is a yes. one number, and this is a true or false. That's Haskell, right? Yeah, that's Haskell, yeah. Okay, now I got it, I, I guess. Oh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Like, type literal. They are not types. They are not types. Yeah, but yeah. We, can, we need to change the name then. Because this will not work. So Wait, many things that should why it wouldn't? That's the namespace for a type, that's the namespace for a value. That's a namespace for a type, that's a namespace yeah, for Yeah, the value, value of this thing and this is the... Like, this is a type and this is a value from this type. That's what I think it means. Yes. I don't know if Hess was going to be happy about that. Dude, by the way, like, what I like about this laziness craze is that 
like we're not using like mutually recursive, right? But you don't need the end, right? You know, right here. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe Nathan knows. Like in F sharp, in F sharp, Pokemon, like you can define a type, blah blah blah, A B C, and then it's something, and then you just do end or a function, because the language is strict, right? So. You can do like yeah, this. Yeah, I am ninety nine percent sure that this will not work, so I'm gonna change it to this. Mm, that, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Wait, you okay? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. So then the question now is, just add the values, right? Just add the values. Okay, yeah, we have the values here. That's also correct. So we're gonna have um, I don't know. Boo. A v boo. Uh, shouldn't it be the values of boo? Uh, like oh, true or false? Oh, true or false. Oh. Well, actually, I don't know why you guys would do that instead of the same that we are doing on Litra. Yeah, we can do the same. We can do the same philosophy, right? Like boolean value, and then put the just more nesting. Apparently, as far as I understood. I'm not even talking about the nesting. You can do the nesting also, but I mean, why is not carrying a boolean? Uh, I don't understand your question. What do you mean by why is not uh, carrying a boolean? It is. Oh, okay. You see line 20, yeah. it has a tag, L boo, and it oh, carries okay. a type boolean. Right? Okay, we can just, yeah, we can just put literal here, I guess. Uh, no, no, we, no, we can't. Uh, wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, we can't, actually. <laughs> Dude, I, I maybe we can. Isn't the val isn't the point of the value to represent? Yeah, oh man, it wait, the... it's sharpened. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> it's compiling GHC now. <laughs> Dude, I think I'm thinking of killing this, but it's so long. Like it's already five gigabytes. I'm just gonna leave it here. I don't but, understand uh, why it's taking so long, but okay. <laughs> Go on, Atta. My kid was talking. I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? We were talking about the why the value. We were talking about data value. That's what we were talking. About. Okay, explain to me what's the point of value then? Yeah, please. I also because I thought the, the I thought the value was to, for example, you don't have a representation of what it means to be unit, so you just add it there. Like yeah. that's the type unit. Yeah, it's the representation. That's the value for unit. Yeah, instantiation. Uh, like a bool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a bool would be true and false, something like this. Okay. Uh, so. Well, in programming languages, we have an expression, right? Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, this is an expression, right? Let me see where you are. He's down there. Where are you? Oh, down there. Okay. Here. And expressions like, are composed of order expressions. So, the plus here is composing with those two expressions to form like mm -hmm. another one, right? Yeah. So, one here, it's an expression. Right? Yeah. That's fine. Uh, but then it evaluates to something. Yes. It evaluates yeah. to a value. Yeah. And what is the value of the expression? This. One. This is what, what I'm highlighting in line 18. Line Isn't 18? this the one? Wait, 18, 18, 18. No, that's the expression, right? Yeah, no. This, no. The, the literal is the expression. Yeah, actually, this is the expression. Yeah, this is the this expression. Is the... And then we, we have another be, literal uh, right? to tag uh, man, man. and identify. Uh, okay, so this that you have here is saying like which interior he's carrying, right? Yes. But in the sense that this expression that will be still evaluated, so that was not evaluated. So literals, they are not values. They are not, they were no, no, not I'm evaluated. not saying that literals are values. Like, don't get me wrong. What? I'm just saying that we are holding an, an, a value inside here. That's what I'm understanding. Yes. So why the are. heck do we need this abstraction if you can hold everything in here? That's the thing. Values and abstractions, I wouldn't say it can't, but I would say it shouldn't be the same thing. Because, man, we, have, we need to have a separation between expression and values. It might look weird in the case of literals, since they are always the same, but look at all the other cases. Like... Do all of those are not values. They don't exist at runtime. Yeah, like I agree. Types, applications, type abstractions. Yeah, know? no, that I agree. I, I agree with that. So that's why we need to have like values apart from expression. And 
no, every expression think, has a... No, wait. What I think Magetto was talking about is instead of having this in here, why not make a product type with the expressions to also hold the values? Right? I think that's what Magetto is, yeah. is thinking about. Say it again. Say it again. Instead of having a separation between expressions and values in this manner, like two mm -hmm. separate data types, we put the values embedded in the tag of, in like the, the sum types, right? As we are doing with the... Yeah, location. no, 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 that yeah, okay. makes zero sense because take a look. Uh, then... I think that's how, where... how everybody does it, by the way, and it works, but okay. Wait, wait, I... how? Can you give me an example? Because yeah, I, I think, think I, no I, one never did that. I think Breno did it like four times in this manner, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. <laughs> uh, can you show example? Yeah, I have. I have. I I can share the, his repo later um, because we're still recording though. But that's what I. That's what I'm understanding. Mageta, correct mm. me if I'm wrong. So in I your mind, it, to be honest. okay, can I repeat? Mm. Say it again. I can try again. Say it again. So instead of having the expressions and the values that the expressions are representing separately in two different data okay. types, we why not you. Don't what, do it what like this. Mean? Stop there. What would that mean? Oh, I see. Do you want these, right? All right. Yes. Okay. So why is that a problem? No. Because yes. Okay. I see. I, I, I think I can see now. What's right. Like? Yeah. Go on. Unless we are using. Go on, Why is that a problem? I want to know. So okay. Unless we are using GADTs, that's a terrible idea. And why is that? Because, for instance, everything that has expression here can be of this type. Therefore, it could be a value. And that doesn't make sense. Right? Values don't exist as an expression because they still need to... You need... Resume the recording now, okay. Think about a native function. How do you write a native function in a language? In our language? In any language. Ah, yeah. Yeah, any language yes. I think I the answer for that is I don't know. I never never did that. Uh, before, oh, we, we did that. We did that, yeah. We implemented that. No, we implemented that. In our language. You said yeah. any yes. language. I don't know any language. Yes. Yeah, How but you think about this. I, I totally understand that because think about this. Like you are on a not think of this expression as the first state until you reach the value. And the value is when you already evolve the native function, the expression. Can you repeat? Because you, about when, you evolve, when you evolve a f an abstraction, you fall into a closure. Yeah. Right? But when you evolve something that is a uh, native function, you need to fall into the native function itself. You can't evolve to a closure. Yeah, but yeah, why that's... not put the native function here then? Why you need value? Yeah. So, man, uh, to be sure, that goes back to what I native asked function, about. it's a value, but it's not an expression. So you don't have an expression for a native function. A native function is just a variable that has the value of a native function in your context. No, so that's that, what I understand. I, I okay, mean, so that already gives you the point of values are different from expressions. They need to be separate because then it wouldn't make sense to have the value ex the type expression here and this could be a native function because it couldn't. Wait. Why do you can't? Can you repeat again one last one last time? Why you can't have the, the native functions here? Yeah, because in a language, unless yeah, okay, yeah, maybe I am a bit uh, overstating the thing, but usually at least the way you implement a native function is your language you parse it as a variable, and it happens that that variable, the value to it, is a native function. You usually don't have a special syntax for saying that an expression is a native function. You can do that, but I would argue that's kind of weird. Uh -huh. But yeah, so... Okay, you... so as far as I can tell, you can do what I said, but that's not usually what, how it's done. Yeah, and even if that was the case, okay. That would be the case of, okay, now it's valid. 
it could be an expression and the expression could be a native function indeed but that's not the case for everything in the sense of if i'm saying here like uh native function right mm -hmm. so native okay yeah that's a very good case so let's do the following let's add native function as an expression right yeah okay. and it will be only as an expression and it will receive like expressions and shit okay so you can see now that it can receive for instance a type of abstraction yeah that doesn't make sense right i don't know what's the final result of that well oh no wait oh now i see oh oh okay having it's because that, that, that's what i was making my mind confused because i remember that in a, our previous implementation the closure and the abstraction and the application they were at, at the same in the same boat yeah they but shouldn't here, but it was because we didn't have types exactly so now that we have those now we do need to separate them because it doesn't make sense to have any type abstraction as a parameter to a native function yeah, it's basically because it would create invalid states, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we still have invalid states, right? So, for example, if you take a look on uh, e application, expression could be a literal. That, does that make sense? It doesn't. <laughs> but, well, that's the better, that's the best thing we can do. If you are not using JDTs, that's why. Okay, yeah, it doesn't make sense to have an application in which the first expression is literal. I agree with that. But we can't fix that like normally, right? Yeah, yeah, you need to have some extra functionality. Okay, my second question is now that I understood that you need to have them separate, my second question is what is this literal? Because this is a literal just to identify between all of those, right? And then here we're going to identify these four and three out of the four are holding values, okay? Okay. What is the difference between these values and the values that this guy will hold? Uh, none. They will be the same. Because a literal evaluates to basically itself. It doesn't do any computation. It's just a matter of like machi machinery. Machinery. Machin machinery. Yeah, that's, that's why I say like on the literals, I don't think we we can perceive that. Oh, now I understand what you say. What you said then, my and What you are saying regarding using the same like data here to carry like here, I think we can. Because well, that's just like having those right then yeah. they will always match like all literals here we always have a value here so i think that's actually a very good idea in a sense like should not have to just write two times right twice even though it would not cause a mismatch because during the evaluation you would match on a literal okay. and when okay you i think I, I think i understood why we have all of those and why we need to make something different just to be sure i think this is going to be the like the uh, the evidence that I understood. Let's go to evaluator uh, dot hs. Uh, so uh, my my I have a feeling that we're gonna have a function called evolve, and I want to try I want to attempt to write the type signature out of it. Of it. I think. I think, right, that this will, will get an expression and return a maybe value. Uh, don't we need the environment as well? And the environment, you're correct. Do we have a type for environment? We yeah. do, right? Yeah, for I now, we, it's here. just an alias for now. We can make it that better oh. if we want in the future. Can't we use a map? Because yeah, that would be hard to search, man. Uh, uh, not hard, but inefficient. It will not because we have a fun we have a function that converts lists of tuples into maps and vice versa. But I will in the future translate this to a map empty because it makes a lot more sense. Uh, anyway, Nata, can you go? Can you take a look on evaluator? 
Are you there? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm understanding yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> to think about the levels that Magito was saying, you have expression, right? And Do what you are going... Value? Okay, can you repeat, Magito, because it's chopped. Oh, no, I was just joking, man. Because yeah. I saw this on F Sharp today. It's beautiful. <laughs> and then you can do stuff like <laughs> this, and then then like X is a anyway. Anyway, so go so, on, Magnata. So think about the different levels that Magnet was talking about. So yeah. you have an expression, right? And you have the static check, so you check its type and shit. Then you go to the dynamic part of evaluating and shit. So you have an expression, and when trying to evaluate that, you either get a value, or you get something, or you get something like an exception in a few languages, right? In Haskell, <laughs> let's say that doesn't happen, even though it's a lie, uh, or it never finishes to comp. Pute, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the outputs. So it never finishes to compute. Uh, we don't need to represent as types because Haskell itself. Oh, wait. Is it the result? Yeah. Yes, right? So, okay, in the case of an interpreter, right, that we have a value that will not finish to terminate, Haskell itself will not terminate. So we yeah. don't need a type for that. And we already have the value. And yeah, you already have the case for when we don't get a Wait. value, we get an error. Isn't isn't the order wrong? No, or it doesn't is matter. It the error before. It doesn't have semantics left and right. Yeah, it doesn't have semantics. What is very bad. Wait. You can what? you can Dude, make for using as an error. For using as a result I mean. No, but there is to uh, another type that is pretty much Either, but with semantics embedded, as far as I can tell. I just like normally. No, but either. what does it mean not to have? It's semantics. because either, either is make like this. Okay. All right. So you can pretty much decide by yourself which one is the error. So when you access the thing, it's literally left or right? Yeah, if I pattern match it, if I pattern oh, match man, it, that's horrible. like case, yeah. either, off, then you do left. Especially if they're the same time. Oh, that's that's disgusting, man. But there, like I said, there is another guy that is specific for uh, adding better Eagles, names. Right? Oh, man, okay, it's just more, way more elegant. Oh, no, but I'm you left. have to see that they are like different use cases. Like, no, yeah, yeah I agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. Or error is using these as result. Yeah, I'm thinking of only error, right? But you can use this on, like, it would be like the choice in F sharp, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you see that we usually, like, rarely we use the choice, right? Yeah. So that's why we usually don't need that. Yeah, okay, so. Uh... Yeah, that's not a problem. So as far as I understood, I'm going to do evaluation with. The environment, and then I need to transform it to values and stuff like that. Yeah, okay, I guess. Okay, I'm, I, I'm gonna try to do this during the weekend because you're already, we're already kind of like 10 minutes or so, something like that. I can stay a little more. I can't today. Oh, so it's fine. I'm gonna work on my database. No, if you want, you can go with this. Like, if Nathan has yeah, the time. Yeah, oh man, I need to get used to the language first. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna save the evaluator here. Uh, the feature, the the main function is already okay. Okay, so can you can you can commit this and get And I'm gonna finish the recording now.